This little example is uh, assignment 17, problem number 7, um, how to calculate chi-squared tests, um, tests of independence. Um, so here's the data. I'm just going to do it for A because B and A is going to be the same thing. Um, this is what's observed. This is what we observe and want to determine if it is far enough, of, uh, if it's close enough to what we would expect. So I just copied the observed table over. We observed three, 13 large companies in favor, 10 large companies opposed, 130 large companies in fa uh, 130 small companies in favor, 24 opposed. These two numbers are called the column totals, or the row totals, or the marginal totals. Sample size is 177, which happens to be the sum of all four of these. You can check down here. It's also the sum of these two and this is some of these two. Now, next table we have to create is the expected. And again, I'm just using Excel for the, uh, for the arithmetic. Large, small, total, pro, anti, total. To get the expected table, we'll just copy the totals over. because the totals are what we really need. And this is based on the definition of independence, or one of the definitions of independence. If we recall back previously, uh, events A and B are independent if the probability of A times the probability of B is equal to the probability of A and B. Well this cell will be the probability of A and B, of large and pro. This is going to be the probability of pro. This will be the probability of large. Technically, you're dividing by the sample size each time. So to determine the count, which really isn't the probability, let's go ahead and do the probabilities anyway. So the probability of a total is not 123. I mean, it's not 23 it's equal to 23 divided by 177. And the probability of being a small businessman in a business in this sample is not 154, it's 154 divided by 177. And the probability of being in favor is not 143, it's 143 over 177. And finally, the probability of being against is not 34, it's 34 over 177. So if these two events, the position on pro-con and the large-small, are independent, then this probability here, this probability of A intersect B, is going to be equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. And if the two variables, pro-anti and large-small, are independent, this probability is going to be equal to the probability of pro times the probability of small. This will be equal to the probability of anti times the probability of large. This is going to equal the probability of anti times the probability of small. So these are all probabilities, or these are probabilities. This is called the joint distribution because it's the distribution of both A and B together. These are called marginal distributions because they are the distributions of A or the distribution of B independently. So let's do another table. We'll call this one the expected counts. Just to make things easy, I'm going to copy and paste this. Well, if the proportion, if, if these two events, large, small, and pro-anti, are independent, then these are the correct probabilities, which means that counts will just be the probabilities times our sample size, our sample size of 177. So this is times 177, times 177, times 177, times 177. 
So those are our expected count. Oops, just can't do that. So these numbers are our expected counts under the assumption that the two variables are independent. This is what we observe. These are the observed counts. These are the expected counts. So the chi-squared test statistic is just the sum over all four of these cells of the square of the difference expected, uh, observed minus expected, divided by the expected. So we'll call the observed minus expected, we'll call that the deviation, just because we need to call it something. So the deviation is 13 minus, oops, this is going to be equal to the 13 minus the 18.58. And this deviation will be the 10 minus the 4.41. And this deviation will be the 130 minus the 124. And this will be the 24 minus the 29. Notice that these add up to 0. So this is observed minus expected. The chi-squared test statistic is just the sum of those observed minus expected squareds divided by the expecteds. So this is, and we'll go ahead and lay this out in another table. So observed minus expected, this is equal to observed minus expected, power of 2, divided by the, observ uh, the expected. So this 1.67 is this number squared, divided by that. 7.05 is this number squared, divided by that, etc. So the test statistic is just the sum of all four of these. So the test statistic is 10.03283, which I believe we're supposed to round to three decimal places, it's 10.023. Interesting. I guess they rounded someplace else. Or I got the numbers in there wrong. 13, 10, 130, 24. Nope. My calculations are right. Oh, and chi-squared requires the degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom for the table will just be the number of rows minus 1 times the number of columns minus 1. Rows are 2, columns are 2. 2 rows, 2 columns, 2 minus 1 times 2 minus 1 is 1. So this will be dis uh, this is distributed as chi-squared with one degree of freedom. That's really how you do this. Notice again that this test of independence is based on our definition of independence which is A and B are independent if the probability of A times the probability of B is equal to the probability of A intersect B. Probability of A times the probability of B is equal to the probability of A intersect B. So I hope this was helpful.